oh, 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 oh. Being a man means responsibility, accepting it, leaning into it. I don't know, and, and I think I'm okay with that. Love. Tenacity. Strong. For me, a man means gentleness, and it means collaboration. I'm a man. I told my son it's okay to cry. My dad never told me that. Today, we're talking about the relationship between fatherhood and masculinity, and how our views of both have changed over time. My dad wasn't a consistent presence in my life growing up, and that was difficult because I had to learn how to be a man by observing other men in my life, some of whom weren't always the best role models. And then I became a dad myself, and I wanted to become a good example of what I thought a good dad should be. And now I'm much more vulnerable and engaged in my daughter's life. But I'm definitely not alone in this. I know a lot of men that are changing the narrative and exploring different ideas of what it truly means to be a dad. I'm Jason Rosario, and this is Dear Men. The first time I cried ever since I was a child was when my son was born, and I, I didn't cry, I, I wept. And I wept uncontrollably. My dad, in, wow, 30 years, maybe 35 years, never said, I love you or never said I was proud of you. And it broke my heart, because I'm like, this is my rock, this is my, my dad. Fatherhood is my greatest accomplishment. No better feeling than when I get home at the end of the day. You know, I hear, Dad! And they come running up. I had to get custody of my daughter to become a single parent. How can I teach two girls things that a woman's supposed to teach to two girls? My father was a borrachón. He didn't have a responsibility. I did the opposite. I mean, I think I did a good job. Kids are good, good kids. I taught them the good and the bad of life. I have one son who is young and is grappling with his own gender identity, um, which has been rather challenging uh, and enlightening as well. It enlightened me of my own sense of who I am, and, and you know, it's, you know, We've had some interesting moments, definitely. I have a 10-year-old son. I think that if I'm not in the picture, he runs the risk of not knowing where to pull from for a healthy, perhaps, a healthy example of what uh, a man could look like. In this episode, we talked to Sean Thompson, but y'all might know him as superstar fitness guru, Sean T. Sean's Instagram feed is chock full of workout videos and fun photos of his twin toddler boys. He and his husband, Scott, were the first same-sex couple featured on the cover of Parents Magazine. But their journey to fatherhood was a difficult one, and it taught the two more than they can ever bargain for. Such a pleasure What's meeting up, you, bro. Man. Nice to meet you, too. Oh, man, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Let's, thanks for let's walk me, over here. Oh, that's sweet. Cool. So in terms of you making that decision to become a father, I mean, just with, you're a gay man, a black man, um, you know, in the life that you've chosen to live, why make that decision? And were you afraid of any backlash or any challenges that might have come with it? So full disclosure, I didn't want kids. Um, Scott wanted 11, so I was like- He wanted 11 he kids? He wanted 11. And I was like, let's settle on two. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, okay. Right. And let's have um, them at the same time. <laughs> yeah, let's, at the same time, right. I think, you only, you give power to things that make you different or you can utilize the power of the thing that makes you different. And so for me, I already know that people don't like gay people. So I'm not giving you the power. I already know that people, there's a lot of people don't like that I'm married and I'm gay. I'm not giving you the power. I'm giving that relationship love. I already know that people don't like the fact that it's interracial. I'm gonna show you how happy an interracial gay couple can be. But I actually didn't necessarily, I didn't choose to be gay. It's, it's my life, it's what, it's a part of me. And in addition to that, I did choose to be happy. And so I'm choosing happiness over choosing you to be happy. You want me to be silent? And I'm like, no, I'm gonna be loudly in love so that you can see what love is. Cause when you look at me, you might exude hate, but you won't get hate back from me. 
getting to spend time with one another is the best. Absolutely, 100% perfect. Ever. So tell, tell me about that joy and tell me about that journey of becoming a father. Oh man. <laughs> I think I get like you, you, internally feel free to cry. emotional. Feel free to cry. It's like, well, I mean, that was a journey in itself. It was another journey that shaped me to be the man I am today. And we actually we went through a surrogacy. It took us five years to have kids, wow. six egg donors, five surrogates, five years. The interpersonal relationships that happened with all of those women that tried to help us out. And so now, like looking at these two little boys. Not to say that it wasn't really tough to go through that five years, but I couldn't imagine being anyone else but them. They're just the, the light of our world, the light of our life. I didn't know I had another chamber of love in my heart, you know, because for me, my love all went to Scott and then the passions and what I love and my career and my life and my friends and my family. But they unlocked this ridiculous type of love that's undescribable and, and, and that's the joy. The most important thing I can say for whether you're a single parent out there or you are raising your child with someone else is the, if you're a single parent, the more you stay connected to yourself and the happier you are, that's where the child is going to get their happiness from. And for Scott and I, like people look at us sideways when we say what I'm about to say to you. We're like, people say, who comes first? I'm like, Scott comes first. Yeah. And then those two little rugrats come second. <laughs> you know? Talking about foundation, right? And they see our love and they feed off of that love. And, but together as a unit, you know, we make them our priority. Oh my gosh, you're standing on your own, Silas. Come here, come here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So Sean, fatherhood is changing as we see it, right? The traditional roles of what it means to be a father, you know, you're changing that, I'm changing that. I'm a, a proud father of a 17-year-old daughter, believe it or not. Congratulations, so, thank plus you. 17 thank years. Thank you, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Fatherhood has changed. What would you say has changed significantly? I think the change and the evolution of fatherhood is actually really good. Not every, not every family is like, dad is gone and mom is home. It's it's everything. And what I see and what I love, at least from what I'm surrounded with, is a lot of men cutting the hours at work to be home. And so how do you and Scott manage that, the, the parenting roles, as it were? It is so crazy because, you know, in a, in a heterosexual relationship, there's like, People think there are roles. I don't think there should be roles anyway, right. but... But there are gender roles. But there are there yeah. are general roles, but... Whether you subscribe to them or not. Yeah, exist. exactly. Right. If you subscribe to them. But our, ours are really different. So I'm more the disciplinarian and the teacher. And Scott is, like, he has the bags ready. He, like, he makes the food. He has the food prepped. He has... And he's the more... I mean, we're both loving, but he, if they hit their head... I'm more, if they hit their head, like one of my sons ran into the chair the other day and I laughed at him. He started right. crying and I laughed. <laughs> I'm like, ah. And Scott is like, why are you laughing at me? He goes, and, you know, he's the one that picks them up. You know what I mean? So it's like that kind of thing. I mean, it's so bad, but I don't want, I just, I'm just like, I thought it was funny. Like, you're fine. And Scott's the more like, you know. Sander. <laughs> Sander. Look, say ball. <laughs> ball. <laughs> right, say ball. Everyone knows you as a super successful fitness guru, but there's a bigger story, a deeper story, one of transformation. And I want to hear about it, man. Tell us a little bit about it. My foundation, where a lot of people's foundation is, you're at home, you grow up, you wake up, you go to school. My foundation for a long time was clouded with the fact that I was sexually abused. Almost every single night, from the time I was eight to the time I was like 12 years old. So I really don't, while I remember that very vividly, I didn't feel like I was living. And not until I decided at 14 years old, I, I moved out of my house and I moved in with my grandparents. I had to basically tell a lie. <laughs> I told my grandparents, I was like, I really want to help you guys out, but I needed to get out of this toxic environment that I was in because every single day I was waking up in fear. So for me, whenever I encounter struggle or people encounter struggle, 
it's like let's find a solution because we already know what fear is and we already already know what we what we have trouble doing. But if you find a solution, there's a way to get to the next level. Yeah. So staying with that point for a minute in terms of you know what you had to deal with in that trauma, how has that shaped you as a man today, and how have you evolved from that experience? I didn't always have it together, you know. Every, for me, it's like every seven years, I had some crazy transition in my life. You know, seven, eight years old, I was being molested. 14 years old, I moved out of my house. 21 years old, I came out as a gay man. 28 years old, I released my first fitness program. So that's what shaped me as the man I am today, is going through, like the foundation of who I am was rocky. However, I made the choice to continue to change because there are a lot of people who go through things when they're younger and they don't want to repair those cracks. They don't want to go back and revisit that. How has that informed your views of manhood and masculinity and what it means to be a man? Men have masculine and feminine energy. So masculinity is a balance of who you are. And just the strength is actually, the strength of masculinity is act actually the acceptance of who you are and what you can truthfully tell the world. I say, if you can literally live in a glass house for a week, like let people see what you do for a week, yeah. and you're transparent, then that's really showing your masculine side because you're like, this is me. Sean, thanks for being here, man. This is fun, brother. Today's episode was incredibly personal to me because as a father to a teenage daughter, I'm still trying to figure out this fatherhood thing. But now I want to hear from you and your stories. Make sure you hit me up on social media and use the hashtag Dear Men because this is a journey that we have to walk through together. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you here next week. I'm Jason Rosario, and this is Dear Men.